Hey everybody, Odie here, and today we're up against the Ziggs Blitzcrank bot lane. We have a Nautilus as our support, which is our favorite support as always. And we're going to start off by going for our level 1 invade, starting with E. So you'll notice that I start E, get my Doran ring, two potions, and run down mid. Every single game I do this because I'm always super confident as Seraphine, especially when we have a Nautilus support with a lot of good follow-up. Our level 1 is very, very strong with beat drop E. Also, due to community feedback, you also notice that my brightness is made look a little darker. This is actually a filter I added in my editing software. In future videos, it'll look more natural because this is using old footage from a few days ago where I still have the bleach game brightness. So I hope this helps your eyes, everybody, and enjoy. Also, if you have four people or more, then it's safe to invade. If you have ever four or less people invading, like if you don't feel only other three, you don't invade. It's usually just too dangerous. But if we have five here, so it's definitely worth just invading. Messing around and seeing what's going on. Respect the counter invade and just walk away. Try to disengage the best you can. That's why E is really good because double E will stun him in place, especially when comboed off with some of the other spells. Get ready for the leash. We are gonna leash until 137 roughly. I also am very friendly and I always use my E level one on the camp. So don't be afraid to use your E or empowered E like the double E on the blue buff. So I left the 137, go to lane. The Ziggs lane is actually pretty easy. You just can't stay next to your minions. If you stay away from the minion wave, he has to choose between hitting you or the minions, and also his bombs won't automatically detonate if you stand away from the minion. So, I always will stand as far away from the minions as possible, like right outside the minion wave, so he can't hit me and the minions at the same time. Then a nice double E, auto attack, back off. Nice little trade like this is all we need to do. Nautilus is being a little too aggressive, and he should not be doing this, honestly, because even though he's level 2 right now, it, my level 2 is not that strong. I hit level 2 first, and now they're level 1, and now it's definitely a good time to go in, so I do as much damage as I can, double Q, auto, and almost kill the Blitzcrank. If I had just let, had one more auto attack or moved as I autoed a bit better, I might have been actually able to get a kill. However, it was still very strong, we made him burn a lot of things, and he's very low in health, so it makes it much easier. Whenever Q landed on the enemy, we get a lot of damage, he blitz, blitz burns flash, and we are in a really good spot in this lane. So I'm going to keep auto-shoving this lane right now because I'm not afraid if we get ganked because we have so much health advantage, so many sum advantage, and we have a massive wave pushing. So normally I never auto-tower, but we already have someone moving, and I'm trying to fish for a kill on this Blitzcrank, and I'm not really afraid of getting ganked. I see Nala's going for a roam. I'm going to keep the pressure up bot lane because I'm not afraid again of getting ganked. Normally I would be afraid, but because of how low Blitzcrank is, and that I have minion advantage, I'm not as scared at all. Nautilus picks up a kill mid lane, and I'm able to just safely back off, get some damage in, and then back off from the potential gank that's coming. Because they're now they're walking up for no reason, they could be getting me ganked. I see Kindred mid, and I know that I'm much safer. Enemy shove the lane. I'm low on mana, and I kind of want to reset, but unfortunately, I don't have 1100 gold yet, so I can't really get my lost chapter. So I actually end up staying here in lane. The next wave is a cannon wave. And I'm trying to keep the wave here as long as possible. I was thinking about resetting, but I just know I can't because I'm going to lose too much stuff if I just reset here when it pushes towards the enemy. You cannot reset this position. It's just too risky. Even though I have TP, just better to collect your wave, get the 1100 gold, then TP back to lane. Because it's more efficient for Seraphine to never leave lane after 1100 than before 1100. Final wave. We need to shove this as fast as possible, and then we can get out. Now we have a good time. We're almost enough money for our lost chapter. So I end up backing here because I want to get my lost chapter gold. And I should have enough by the time I get back to base. I have to wait for a few gold, but it's worth it because Lost Chapter is broken and we have TP. Now that we're back to lane with Lost Chapter, we can never really lose lane. We can just keep auto shoving lanes and catch every single wave without being any pressure at all on us. We should never run out of mana anymore, and this is the best time of Seraphine. We feel very strong early game with Lost Chapter. My intuition here tells me Kindred might be on Dragon, so I do go for a roam while we have the Cannon Wave. I see no one on Dragon, so I'm like, oh, never mind. And instead I go for a gank here, I know Lee Sin's following me. And we go for a nice gank play, and potentially get a kill here because we're looking for the nice angle. I land the double ability. Kindred, it was bot lane, so I was right. And we just shove it in, get some nice damage on Blitzcrank, and we get a kill. Because I have no money right now, I only have 600, I stay in lane, and I want to shove this lane to ASAP just to get it under. Harass the Ziggs under tower, get some tower damage on, get a tower plate, and keep shoving this wave in until I have a bit more gold to reset. Right now, I still have some gold, but I'm going to go for a reset here because there's nothing else to do, and the Blitzcrank came back. So I bought my item and go back to lane. I have no idea what Nautilus is doing. He is super aggressive, and he's just running this town, so I'm just going to let him do his thing. I'm not following him because I just want to get my, my farm more. Farming is way more important than potentially fighting and getting ganked, so I'm going to farm and let Nautilus do the pressure that he wants to do. He feels confident, so I'll let him be confident. Shove this wave in, look for a play, maybe going for Dragon. So we want to shove this wave, and then look for our options. I opt to stay here because I have ult up, and I'm very strong, and I'm not really afraid of getting ganked. I have ult up, I have full kill combo ready. 
Lee Sin's covering, and even though we get ganked, I'm not scared at all. We can easily win these fights. I am very strong, very fed. Ult ready, Lee Sin's hovering. We're in good, good shape. Normally, you would back off in, like, in this kind of moment and then like let the wave come back to you. But because we're so far ahead, this does not matter. Making a stand for Dragon. We're kind of wanting to go at We have all this pry on our team. Nautilus Hands hook. I R E double Cuba Ziggs. Pretty much kill him right there. Blitzcrank keeps chasing. My Q's up. I cube a Kindred. And then I do double E. I miss the Kindred, but I kill the Blitzcrank and I walk away because I don't want to chase this. So I go back to lane. Clear the wave. And you do want to clear the wave after you get a play just to get the farm going. Clear his next wave. And I don't know where anyone is, so I'm a little careful. Um, I don't think they're on Dragon. They might be. But I'm going to quickly shove this and then get out. This way, we have most prio, and I get a nice, safe reset. Shoving a lane is the best thing you can do when you get a kill. We see Lee Sin setting up for Dragon, so I want to give him some prio. I hard shove this wave, and then rotate the Dragon. They make sure that Lee Sin has the best chance of getting dragged. If we shove a lane, it forces the enemy to choose between going for the lane or going for the Dragon. So, I end up making them have that decision. They choose the lane. We get Dragon. I walk back to lane. Get some more farm. Catch my wave. I see Nautilus' mid lane. I can't do anything about that, though. So I'm just going to keep shoving bottom because I know I'm safe. Kindred's dead. Blitzcrank's dead. I'm not really afraid of anything. Hard shove his wave. Go for a ward. And look for my next option. And poor Ziggs here doesn't know his range. Poor him. Again, Kindred's top side. We see her right now top. So we know we can still be pressuring them. Ari's doing a great job pressuring mid. I'm not afraid of anything. I end up going for a roam, I shove a lane, and I go to cover mid lane, so I want to go for Rift Herald. And we notice that mid lane is unattended, so I clear this wave, make some more prior for my team, hard shove this, and then look for my next option. Looks like it's going to be TPing bottom, I get a tower plate and TP bot. Clear this wave, collect every wave I can possibly get, help me on my team the best I can. I just do a flash ult play here, I ult, flash, hit the zigs, Q, and get a kill. Because we see Kindred dead, we know we're not threatened by any gank. So I'm going to continue shoving this lane and getting pressure. I want to take this tower as fast as possible in this laning phase. So I normally would not be here, but because we know where Kindred is, we know she's dead. She just came back up. We're in Harass. And I actually stay around here because I don't even want to reset. I kind of want to stay and get another wave, even though I have 1,800 gold. In hindsight, I probably should have reset here, but I'm being pretty greedy, and this is a bad idea. Normally, you want to reset in this situation. We just have a lot of prio. We see Kindred, and I'm not afraid. I'm going to clear this wave right now and then look for my next option. Resetting seems pretty good here, so I'm going to reset my 2k goal by my Leandries and start building toward my Cosmic Drive. I also want to just thank everybody so far who's been liking my videos. I've been doing a lot of Seraphine educational content, and I'm hoping this has been helping the community. So, appreciate a thumbs up and a like. Subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to see more of kind of this content. And I really appreciate everyone's feedback so far. When seeing a dive is going to be set up, we see Lee Sims walking towards bot side. If you're looking for a dive with Rift Herald, you want to always shove your lane. You play it slowly, wait what's going on. Blitzcrank misses his hook, Nautilus hits his hook, I E, let's get the stun, Q, auto, I miss my ultimate, it was a pretty bad ult, double Q, and then walk away, there's great tower dive, and we get our tower, I couldn't save because we didn't have a W up, so the poor Nautilus dies, but it ended up working out for us, we got a double kill, and we are extremely fed, when it's safe to do so, let your Rift Herald crash, then clear a wave as best you can, walk away, Dragon's about to spawn, so you shove the prio, and then run to mid to get the next farm, we are more of an okay of leaving Dragon early, honestly, we see Blitzcrank showing up, Nautilus gets ready for his hook, we land a hook on Blitzcrank, 4 man on Blitz, Blitz dies, I get my 5th kill this game. Go buy my items, run back to lane, and that is all it is, just running back, getting our farm, and getting kills just come to us, we don't have to do anything fancy in these games. We have ultimate, so we are hovering, but it looks like the enemy just backs off because they're smart, they don't want to overextend, Fiora is shoving top lane pretty hard, so clear and collect my wave, and that's, again, it's all you have to do. It's a misconception that you have to make these fancy plays and win games. All you gotta do is play consistent. Get to your champion and what it is meant to do, right? Follow the identity, collect waves like Seraphine, and that's all you have to do to climb. You don't have to do anything crazy. Kills will just come to you. You can be patient, and even in, like, bronze games, the same thing. Don't do anything that's chasing. Don't be over-aggressive. Just play normally, and you'll definitely pay off for you. Almost 10 CS per minute game. Crazy game where I just keep getting a lot of farm and just playing normally. And if we look here, we're going to shove another wave. And then we have no objectives up, so we need to see what we're going to do. We see um, we see Darius is down bot lane for no reason. He's overextended, and again, there's no objectives up. So I prep my kill combo, and they don't even need my help. So even though I have my kill combo ready, it's good to just be a backup. Maybe the red fight would have broken out. Maybe more enemies would show up. But it's just good to do that. And just follow if you need to. There's nothing to do. No one needs us mid lane. No one needs us anywhere. We're just chilling and waiting for the next objective. 
We buy our Cosmic Drive, and now we have Leandre's Cosmic Drive and some stacks of Dark Seal. This is like my core build that I like to go on Seraphine. It is very efficient for APC. You are squishy because you don't have any help from like Seraph's Embrace or like Rylai's, but you have a lot of damage and a lot of CBR. And this is like the initial Cupic build that he did back in the day. And I still think he uses this one quite a lot. And after this, I usually buy a Rabadon. But again, at 18 minutes, I'm already at like full build, quote unquote, right? Like, this is my, my core build, these two items. Rabadon is when you feel, see a huge damage spike, but this is when you feel very useful, the two item spike here. Dark Seal, I like to get a lot too. And it's just very helpful. Let's see, a fight's breaking out, so I end up being ready my kill combo. I have my R, E, Q combo ready, but it looks like we don't need our help yet. So we just reposition and then try to wait for the fight to break out. I'm in the back line behind my Ari. I do double W and I do R to hit the zigs. I double E, I miss him, so it doesn't get a pick on him right there initially. Ari goes to clean up, and she gets a double kill. She keeps going in. And I let it play out. Triple kill, and then quadra kill. This Ari is cracked and just got a quadra kill, and that's pretty much how the game goes. As we don't have enough money to buy anything meaningful, we just want to get as much money as we can. Everyone's dead on the enemy team, so we just want to shove ASAP. Maybe get some tower damage and just crash the wave on tower. Because again, no one just respawned, it's just Kindred, and Kindred's bot lane, so I'm no threats at all. Do a little bit of tower damage, and then we can back off and look for the next thing we can do. Which is chicken camp, actually, because chickens are pretty low. We can do a Q, and then use a double Q, and it should kill all the baby chickens. I usually ignore the big chickens because it takes too long to kill in Seraphine. But the baby chickens, or baby wolves, or krugs are very easy to kill. So camps that have a lot of mini minions with it are worth going for. But any like big camp that's like by itself is kind of hard for Seraphine to deal with. So that's usually my logic there. I find no threats on the enemy team, so I decide on buying a Magi. So I wait to buy my Magi. I already have 10 stacks, so there's no reason not to buy it at this point. I am extremely strong, and I'm not scared of anybody. And that's like kind of the common trend of this game, is where I'm not scared. So I just keep trying to snowball my lead and do as much damage as possible. If you have a 10 stack Magi, it's more efficient than a Rabadon's at this stage of the game. It's only 20 minutes in, and it's going to get stacked regardless, because it's so easy to get assists on this champion. We go Siege a Tower a little bit. Ari's coming to flank. We look for an option. Ari gets a pick on the Ziggs. I finish off the Tower of my passive, and we just part shoving this lane and sieging because we're really trying to sieging a seraphine i prep all my abilities i miss my ult i get hooked by blitzcrank instantly have to flash away and kite back to my team we pop blitzcrank and then we look to siege again and again seraphine's very good at sieging so we take the next tower and we don't want to overextend and overstay our welcome even though we got a lot of kills here we ping dragon that we're going to go to dragon because it's a free objective and we don't want to like overextend or over you know get lucky right because we just use a lot of spells so take a dragon and that's about it so dragon gets lower and honestly this game has been pretty good we got 5 0 and 7 204 cs almost a 10 cs per minute game this is honestly like almost a perfect game of seraphine yes we made a few mistakes but that's all it is however the enemy surrenders right about now and we can't really do anything about it so thanks guys for watching like comment subscribe let me know what you think about seraphine bot lane and see you later Bye bye